What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another potentially live session where we don't have crazy audio delay. I'm hoping this is going to be smooth as Moe's backside. It's going to be that smooth, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to be talking about how to grow your video business. Uh, maybe you have a photography business. You could probably swap these two words out for the sake of this video. And, and to kick it off, um, Mo and Drigo are here in, in the office. Mo, give us some context as to what the heck we're talking about today. Yeah, so I feel like... I'm being seen as just a business that can chop up good video. Um, we're being booked because of our editing style, kind of the quality of the videos that we edit and just making it all hands off for the client. That all said, I'm starting to feel like that's not enough of an X factor to scale the business or grow the business. And I want personally, now that I'm in this period of growth to make what I create related to some sort of like tangible outcome or measurable result, something like that. And I'm having struggles, like just figuring out how to connect the dots there. Drew, did you want to say something? You got the mic like you're ready to go. I'm always ready to go. Okay, Carson's already dropping money on us already. Do you need a reel and what should be in it? And if so, uh, Carson and everybody else, just hang out for two seconds while I try to help give us some structure, the conversation, some context as to what we're talking about. And then I'll be able to answer all of your individual questions. Of course, feel free to make it rain whenever you want. <laughs> I'm not going to complain if you want to drop money in my face. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Ricky just telling me, hold on, uh, hold on from the back office. He's like, <laughs> Ricky says that he's going to keep track of all the, the super chat questions. So we will get to them. Uh, so welcome everybody. All right. And so here's the problem. The problem is this. There's a lot of really super creative people who make things. They make logos. They make websites. They make um, uh, animated videos. They make live action videos. They, they make all kinds of things, right? And both of you guys are in the video space. And we're just wondering, like, how come we can't seem to charge what we're worth? Why can't we get the value that we create in the world? And the number one mistake and the thing that we're going to be focused on today about how to grow your video business is to stop selling. What I'm going to say next. Stop selling what? Video. What you make. What you make. Stop selling what you make. Okay. And what you make is a byproduct of your thinking and your creativity. So stop selling what you make. And this is the focus that we're all doing. Like we show more videos and we want to show sexier videos and then we want to pay, make a page full of videos. What we want to do is, is we want to sell instead. So we want to stop doing that. Instead, we're going to sell something else. We're going to sell the impact that you create. Sell the impact you create. Just like that. And some of you might be sitting there shaking your head like, wh wh what? Okay. This is what you want to do. I'm going to throw a sticker on here because I just learned how to do stickers. This one. This finger. Come on, finger. Help me out. <laughs> nope. That's a sell the impact that you create. And so that's the big question is like, what impact do you create? And if you continue to focus on what it looks like, You know, if that's what you do, you're going to be in trouble because to the client, they can't tell the difference between an okay video, a medium video. They could probably tell like a, a David Fincher video versus right. a Mo Ismail video. But other than that, it's really hard. And so you're going to be stuck in this space. So we know a couple of things, right? We know, um, let me see if I can do a drawing. And let's see if I could do this kind of drawing. Okay, hopefully you guys can help narrate this. What's that? What that is it? Like, that looks like poo-poo. Yeah, yeah, it's poo-poo. Like, <laughs> we know a crap video when we see one. Right. It's got funky edits. It's disjointed. Color grading is all over the place. The audio is peaking. Things are out of focus. That's unprofessional. That's probably like some really, like really bad student work. And we know what this is. What is that? Academy Awards. It's Academy Awards. The stuff that, you know that the big Chris people makes. do, right? So in this area here, I think it's very hard for people to distinguish the difference. Mm. So we know what an Academy Award winning film looks like, a David Fincher music video. And we also know what a piece of crap video, like some kid with shaky camera, we know right. that. But in this space, it's very hard to tell the difference. And so we're here, stuck here, and we wanna know how to get here. 
So we have to kind of figure out the impact that we're going to make. Okay, so let's do a deep dive onto this. Hopefully by the end of this video, this 45 minute-ish video, this whiteboard session, we're going to uncover those things and help all of you out to have a more informed conversation with your client so that you can create an impact on their business. That's why it says grow your video business. And the more your client's business you grow, the more you grow. Help your clients increase their business and you will grow. Okay, I also wanna say hi to all the pro members here. Pro members, your cameras are off mostly. Yeah, there we go. Thank you for turning on your camera pick. Yeah, there you go, Connor. Look at my pro fam. There we go, throwing signs, LA. Washington, how's it going? Robert, uh, who's that? Ashwin, yes, Roger. Is it Roger, who's that? I can't, my eyesight's not so good. Got Julie, Stanley. Thank you. Andres. Can the can Hawkwind, our YouTube audience see them too? Robert Connor. Beautiful. Can they? Okay, we're working on <laughs> So they're just waving to us, but our YouTube audience cannot see you just yet. So get your game face on, everybody. Hi, how's it going? Hi, Julie. Okay, so let's get into it, Mo. All let's right. do it. Okay, here we are. I've prepared a slide already, sort of. Sort Excited. of. We don't even need Keto anymore because we've got this amazing Google Jamboard. Thank you, Google. Okay, so the question here usually is when somebody goes, ring, ring, hey, Mo, I need a video. What's your response? Well, I'm much better now, but why do you need a video is my response. You know, because I love, okay, can you play the other side to this? You guys Ooh, just look at we'll each play. other because do I don't want to jump in here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're the client and Mo's the vendor, okay? So ring, ring, go. Hey, Mo, I heard you do videos. That's right. How can I help you? We, we need a video for my business. Awesome. Can you tell me a little bit about your business? Yeah, we are a uh, construction company. We build houses. Nice. Yeah. And we just want a video that, you know, some drone footage that really shows how cool our constructions look like. Is that something you can help us with? Totally. But before we get into the nitty gritty of how cool we can make it, can I ask why you even need a video? We're growing a lot. And I want to keep building that momentum. I think showing the properties that we got to work on this year is really going to be able to show our clients the kind of projects that we're able to deliver on. Awesome. Well, first off, congratulations on growing a lot. Yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah, that's awesome for you. And you said you want to continue the momentum. What does momentum look like? We just want to get more leads coming in, more people coming to our website and seeing what we're doing. Okay. So you want the video to lead people to your website? Yeah, I'd say so. Sounded a little hesitant there. I mean, so we wanted more, you know, I, I, I'm just really proud of the projects that we're working on. I want to just capture those. So you want to show off your work too, yeah, capture that's it. what you're doing. Okay. Well, both can happen. Is there a specific like number that you're trying to hit with these leads? No, I'm not. No? You just want all the leads? Yeah, I want all the leads. <laughs> Do you want us to keep going? I don't know. You tell me when you're done. You tell me when you're done. I'm just sitting here watching. You're just sitting you here too. watching? So just to, con to contain where we would take this and what you want to get out of it, what does success look like when it comes to these leads for you? We just want to keep booking more of these, you know, million dollar plus projects, more qualified leads. Okay. Okay, what? No, I'm, I'm thinking, sorry, I'm taking notes here as the person. Am I supposed to be tough on Mo? Uh, you're just you. No, just do you, matter. just do you. Wonderful. And what are your expectations for these million dollar leads? Like, what do you think a video should bring in when it comes to driving these leads for you? You mean per project? Yeah. Like how many leads do you want? Well, so right now I'm not really concerned about the leads. Oh, I must have gotten my notes wrong. I mean, I think the leads are nice, but my main focus right now is to just capture some footage. Oh, okay. So just you just want to capture footage? Yeah, I want to use capture footage to use on my website. Cool. So any footage we get would work? If it, if it looks cool, yeah. Can you tell me what looks cool means? <laughs> I can send you some videos that I saw that we like the look of. Okay, cool. So if it's just shooting footage, what's the budget you've set aside to create cool-looking footage? What does something like this normally cost? I have no idea. Really? Yeah. So are you the right guy? Probably not. Okay. Because so far, I don't even understand exactly what you're wanting aside from a cool video. 
So maybe after I see a reference, I could give you some sort of budget. But I'm sure you've set something aside for this, right? Yeah, we did. So, I mean, this is our first time doing this, Mo. So is there something that I'm not asking you that I should be considering? Um, no. I would just need an answer on the budget that you have for this project. Maybe like fifteen to 20000 Okay. And what are you expecting to happen for fifteen to 20000 I just told you. A cool looking video. We could definitely do that for fifteen to twenty thousand. Okay. So you are the right guy. <laughs> sure am. <laughs> that role play went all over the universe yeah, and then it did. back. I don't he was like easy and then went hard and he went yeah, easy on you. What? It's like make your mind, Drago. Well, you kept what asking is questions that I just as someone doing video for the first time, you know what I mean? I didn't know where to go. Could you just asking deeper questions than I think I was ready to answer. Shoot, I wonder if we can play role play with uh, somebody across the, the universe Let's and the do internet. It. But hold on, hold on. I'm going to just break this thing down. We haven't done this before. We have done many role plays before, but we've never sat down to show you what it is that I'm writing or understanding, and I'm going to break down the thought process. Mo, keep your eyes on, on the prize here, okay? Okay. Don't worry about what's happening Let's there. Do it. So Drigo is the client, Mo's the vendor, and it seemed like what kind of question? what were you trying to find out from Drigo in, in your line of questioning? I was honestly trying to find out what success looked like for him. What success looks like? Yeah. Okay. Because I, I think originally it was like, what problem are we solving? And he said, more leads to the site. And then he said, I want to show off the cool projects we've done. And I said, okay, what, what do leads look like for you? And he said, oh, all the leads. And I said, okay, can you be more specific as to how many you'd like? And that's when he said a million dollar project. And... At that point, he was, and then he switched gears. He said, leads aren't, aren't my concern. I'd rather just show off the project. So I just leaned into what he thought was valuable. So you just let him go wherever he wants to go. And he just literally said things that conflicted. And well, I just tried to him. check him, though. How did you try to check him? I said, I, I may have gotten my notes wrong, but I heard you earlier say you want more leads. Is that not correct? You said you want more leads. Of course I want more leads. I'm a business owner. No, you said that. No, I said I wanted a cool video. I think initially you did say more leads. You, no, you said more leads. I think yeah. you did. Yeah. So that's like um, Drigo's put on the spot here. And it's, a little <laughs> it's a little disjointed, right? So Mo, you're hunting for something. What are you hunting for? Really, their budget. Right. That's like why I'm hunting I put for that. their budget and and like. And what's going to determine their budget? On? Say it again. What's going to determine their budget? The the size of the problem that I'm solving is that what you, I don't. I, I don't know. I'm just question. asking you. I don't know. Whatever they've set aside for this for this project. Okay, so it's arbitrary. Well, I mean, for them, it's probably marketing. Well, okay, it's telling me some things here. Drigo, what did you want to say? Well, based on what I said, seeing that I want to close more million dollar projects, somebody threw that fifteen to twenty thousand dollar number. I mean, I'd be like, that's not proportional for what you're trying to do. Yeah, I would think that you need a way bigger budget for what you're looking to invest in. If that's I would think so too. You guys are trying to close. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's the thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into it. Okay. So Do Mo, it. I I think you're you've been well trained in in approaching these conversations. So there's almost a formula to the way that you're doing this. And if Drigo dances and moves one direction, you tend to just move with them versus like. Hey Drigo, um, what's come, come come back here? Come mm. come back over here and let's have a conversation here. And you need to keep him grounded. So it's just okay. not following him and chasing him wherever you go. Okay, that's like the picture of the dog chasing its own tail, mm -hmm. running around in circles. And that's what's happening. You have knowledge of certain things, and so when he takes you in a place where you know this is going to go south, you need to re-correct. You don't just follow him everywhere he goes. And it felt like if he's like, I need a video about the moon. You're like, let's make a video about the moon. Never mind. I want a video about the stars. Stars are good too. Mm. And you're letting him move all over the place. Okay. So I, I try to do a little diagram here um, because based on the, the premise that I was saying is stop selling what you make, sell the impact that you create. Mm -hmm. So in my mind right now, I'm trying to think, does making a video solve a problem that's going to impact my client's business? Okay, so I wrote a couple things here. So when somebody comes to you and says, I need a fill in the blank, I need a video, I need a website, I need a logo. The first thing that we, get, we have to kind of think is, why does our client need this video? Okay, mm -hmm. like why? That's why I wrote up here from, from um, John Bielenberg. Wait, why? Mm -hmm. Why do you need that? So insert a little pause there, in your mind at least. So mentally you're like, 
but why do you need a video? So let's roll this back and try to be super consistent if you can. Okay, Drigo. So I'm going to ask you, why do you need a video again? We're looking to keep building the momentum of all the properties that we've been constructing. Okay, so is the momentum going well? Yes, very well. Okay, so what what's the video going to do then? I think if it's going to help us highlight that to other potential clients that are reaching out to us. We want to be able to just show them that. We've never done video in the past, so this is going to be a first time for us. Okay, so when you say keep up the momentum, I don't believe you mean keep up the momentum. I think you mean to change the, the direction. Because if you don't do anything, you have momentum right now, mm -hmm. right? Correct. So he's saying momentum, and that's, a, that's an interesting word to use there, okay? So that tells me a couple of things. Things are going well. He said keep the momentum, right? So let's just say this is the momentum, and it's going like that. So if we were to graph it on something like that, right? So if he's going to spend any kind of money, he's not going to want to go here. Why would I spend money? So if your clients don't see themselves having a problem and video not impacting their business at all, you would just let it go. Mm. Who cares? Got it. So what they really want to do, and I'll, I'll use a different color here, is they want to change the momentum. And the difference, the delta, uh, what's the delta? Delta is the triangle, right? Mm -hmm. The delta between where they're heading without you is drastically changed with you. Mm. And the, the greater that this arc can be, now we're talking about something really substantial. So let's get back into it, okay? So here, whatever growth they're doing this year, I'm gonna just put X, okay? The variable X. And then here, if I do something good, I might get you to 2X, or I might get you to 3X, let's just say. And now he's starting to think like, what could happen in my business if I had this video? Mm. So I'm going to go back. Does, first of all, does that make sense? And pro people, I think you have the ability to unmute yourself. I don't have any control. You can unmute yourself. You can say, hey, wait, what's going on? I don't understand. Go back to that. But I have a question. Feel free to just self-regulate one person at a time, unmute and say whatever. I can hear you, okay? You guys good? Okay, great. Fantastic. All right. So I'm trying to figure out what this gentleman, uh, Drigo, wants to do. He's like, I want to change the momentum, really. Mm -hmm. Not keep the momentum, because otherwise he should not spend any money for keeping the momentum. So continue on then. Tell me more about you wanting to change the momentum. Um, change. So we're looking to, like I said, create a piece of content that's going to help us highlight to our future customers the work that we've been doing. So you want to attract future customers? That's correct. Okay, and you think video is going to do that? I think so. I think for the kind of uh, homes that we build, the best way to highlight it would be with the videos to really show how dynamic everything is. Okay. Have you done videos before? It's our first one. Your first one. So tell me about your feelings and emotions about doing your first video. Oh, I'm unsure. You know, I've seen other construction companies do videos and I saw some cool drone videos of like the workers and, and the place what that looks like and I thought I wanted something like that okay and so in, in your in your ideal world like when this all works out what does this video do for your business I mean I wanted to increase the number of sales that we're gonna have okay do you think a video is gonna increase sales I think it's a tool to help that Okay, let me understand your sales process then, okay? You have an unaware prospect, a future customer that's not yet aware of you and your property. Correct. Are, are you trying to rent a property or lease a building or something? We build, build, we build homes for people. Oh, you build custom homes for people? Yes. Okay, so custom home builder, I see. And so who's your future customer? Um, I'd say multimillionaires. And they would just hire you as a general contractor? Yeah, we design everything for them. Oh, so you're a designer builder? Correct. Okay. No, I didn't know that. Okay, so you're a design build. We're very niche. Okay. <laughs> what style of homes? Uh, modern. Okay. <laughs> What's the average price of a home that you sell? Um, I would say around $5 million. $5 million? Is this in the Miami area? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, 
So I'm going to break the role play because usually we don't break the role play. And I'm going to ask you a couple of, or I'm going to tell you what's going on. Yeah. I'm starting to get a sense of his business now mm -hmm. and I'm not making a lot of small talk. You notice how the difference between like I'm zeroing on his problem, Mo? Yeah. Okay. Now he's already telling me numbers. He didn't even tell you numbers before. Did he? He told me. He said 100 million? What he, he said, said 1 million. I said 1 million. 1 million. He See, said, so we're different numbers. That was a generic number based on nothing. Right. So now I've already ascertained that his average home is a million dollars. I'm going to get into the sales process right now and see where the video comes into play. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's go back. So you have a person who's unaware that, that you exist. Where are they going to go? What are they going to see in order for them to become interested? I would say Google. Okay. You say Google? Yeah. Okay. Maybe Instagram, but definitely Google. Google? Uh, you think IG? Okay, so I'm a multimillionaire. For me to afford a $5 million home, you think I'm just going to go on Google? You my wife might. What's that? My wife might. The wife might? Yeah. Really? I'm not a multimillionaire, so I don't know. Just <laughs> play the game. <laughs> no, no, I mean, he, I, keep, I, keep I going. So, it's fine. But yeah. Oh, okay. I, got I, did, I don't think so, rich. right? And I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you why, because usually people that have this kind of money, they're not going to just sit there and blindly search. They're going to ask for referrals. They're going to talk to agents. Mm. They're going to talk to kinds of people who have already done this. Okay, so most likely there's going to be some kind of referral process here. Like Janice, your home is amazing. Who did you work with, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's one thing. Uh, they, they might look at like luxury magazines and people who curate luxurious things. There might be a magazine in the, in the Miami area that where they go and hear and about their... So this is really important. Where they get their news and entertainment from matters more than you think. Chill for one second. Okay. Do you have a notebook, by the way? Okay, so you can just jot them down so you won't forget, yep. right? So the, the, there's a magazine that we get sent. I think it's called literally Lux or Luxury Magazine. And I suppose they send it to us because the people who advertise with them want people like us. Okay, so luxury homes, they sell, they advertise like super fancy expensive cars like the Maybach, uh, limited edition, et cetera, f fill in the blanks, right? The lifestyles of rich and famous people. Because that's, that's, um, that's who would look at these magazines and that's who would buy a $5 million home. They have to have a lot of income in order for them to do this too. And there's a good chance they're already in a home and then maybe you can target them directly. So that's a difference too there, right? Yeah. They're probably already in the general Miami area and they just want a custom thing. And then we kind of have to get into the behaviors like what triggers someone saying, I want a custom home for us now? Some changes have happened in their life. It's called an inciting incident, okay? So when there's an inciting incident that changes our lives, we want to, to, we have to react to that change. In a family, what might be an inciting incident? Oh, uh, you just had a baby? Yeah. Okay, family's growing. Are we out of role play here? Are we out of role play? Yeah, we're, we're not back in role play yet. Oh, okay. Um, family <clears throat> growing. Promotion. Or shrinking, yes. So we'll call that job change. Yep. Okay. They could be moving in. They could be moving out. So there's something that's happening there. Keep going. Chris, this is Julia. I bet they just sold some stock. Or big, but they came into a pile of cash and inherited some equity. Something like that. I need a little bit more volume, uh, gentlemen. I could barely hear Julie. Say time. Julie, go one more time. Say again. Yeah, absolutely. I was thinking like, hey, if I just sold some stock or... Um, got an inheritance, something along those lines. Yes, windfall of money. The first thing you do, let's windfall. go buy a, buy a giant house. <laughs> windfall, okay. I think that's what it's called, like windfall, right? Okay, thank you very much, Julie. Windfall, okay. Anybody else? Promotion. I mean, I got Job change. Money. Job change, okay. Um, what else? That seems pretty, I feel like that covers it for significant changes to someone buying a home. Divorce? A divorce? Family yeah. growing. Yes, shrinking. absolutely, dude. Divorce. That's right. Um, you know what? I remember the sales term. What's that? Real estate investment? To build a custom home? Maybe. Mm -hmm. 
mm, mm. I don't. I don't know what people with that amount of money like to do with it. Peter, your voice is coming in super loud and clear. I just want to say that, by the way, it's crystal clear. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, it's yeah. very nice. Okay, just hold on to that thought. So the inciting incident. There's a. It's a sales term. It's called compelling event. That's what. There's yeah, an I event that compels that them. I was trying to think of the term compelling event. Okay. And then we're almost done with this part. Okay. So something has happened in their life to disrupt what's going on. A compelling event has taken place. And now they're going to be searching for something mm -hmm. as a solution. See, people spend money to solve a problem. When you don't understand the problem, you're not solving anything. I don't know what you're solving then. So what is the problem? So when he's looking for something, he's, if we can help him understand the buyer's mindset, then we then now are speaking his language, Mo. You follow so far? I do, and I have a question. What's your question? You did something that I've never seen you do before, and I don't know if it was role play or with us, but I'd like to ask it anyways. The education that you gave him about a referral process versus Google and IG, when you, you literally stopped him and you said, if they're spending $5 million, did you do that intentionally to build trust and credibility, or were you doing that for the whiteboard? I don't know if there's a difference. Well, in a sale, so in a sales call, if he says we want to make a, he says we want to, we want to attract people to the projects we're doing, and then you say, well, how are people finding you now? These future customers, and he says Google and IG. Would you literally stop in and you, and say like, though yes. I though I kind of agree with you, this doesn't make as much sense as I, for someone who would buy five million dollar home. I would say that might be true, but I'm not sure. Okay, that might be true, but let's find out. Okay. Okay. It doesn't jive with what I understand about the world. I might be missing something here. So can, do you mind if we dig a little deeper? Mm. And uh, if I'm a little bit stronger, a little bit uh, like I haven't had a lot of sleep, I might say, mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No. Okay. Let's, let's, let, you know, let's explore this. So there's a range of ways that you can say that. Mm -hmm. But basically, you cannot allow the client and you to go down a path that you know is already going, not going to work. Yeah. There is the statement, there is no such thing as the right answer to the wrong question, right? So that means if you're like, oh, what do you need to do? And he gives me that answer and it's wrong. The question was wrong. We need to rephrase the question. Right. That's why I said, mm, are you sure? And this is how I'm going to build rapport with the client because I'm speaking the client's language now. Mm -hmm. And I've had this happen many, many times on a discovery call where they think it's, it's A and I know it's Z. Mm -hmm. It's totally different. Okay. Let's keep going down this, unless you want to say something, Trigo. I'm ready. You ready? Okay. So they need to find out about something, and at some point in here, a video appears. Mm. Now I have to make sure that the, the best or most likely path has a video in it. Otherwise, what I'm doing is not going to solve their problem. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I have to turn off my brain to sell what it is that I make, and I have to be able to step in to help them solve their real problem. So right now, I'm looking for... What am I looking for, Mo? The problem. The real problem, because there are a lot of fake problems out the there. The real problem. Okay, for real. I'm looking for the real problem. Deep breath, what's going on? There's just hey, a, a little... Oh. Go ahead, who's talking? No, you guys are good. No, 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 you're so, here. So here's what we're gonna do with Zoom, okay? My pro people, first say your name and then just ask me the question. No doubt. Hey, Chris, it's Ime from Baltimore. I'm a video creator. Um, so a lot of times I'm glad you're talking about finding the real problem, but a lot of times, and maybe this is just depending on the budget and type of client, um, they have a lot of video envy. So they want a video just because, or they want a you know great looking video to show off their, their new renders or their new designs. And I kind of feel like that's what Mo was doing because I've seen myself in that situation where I'm literally helping them trying to uncover their problem on the discovery call. Okay, is there a question? Yeah, so my question is, how do you, I guess, facilitate the conversation to get to that real problem? Uh, okay. When clients don't know what their problem is. Yeah, I'm gonna literally, I'm doing that right now, so that's, I'm glad you're pointing this out. Uh, we, we, you call it video envy. It could just be like trying to keep up with the Joneses where everybody's doing something and then we should do it too. So there's, uh, I think it's called FOMO. The young people say FOMO, fear of missing out. 
Okay, so they, they're like, oh, my competitor's doing this. Mm -hmm. Everybody seems to be doing this. I need to be doing this. And if they're doing it out of that kind of gut instinct, it's generally not a good business decision, okay? So just we just need to recognize that. And it's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's good to keep up with your competitors, but we're, we're not always so sure. And we don't want to do what your competitor's doing, per se, just because they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to establish myself as a person who knows what they're doing, as an expert, as an authority, and to try to provide them some strategic and sound business advice as it relates to a creative thing. Mm. So let's continue the dance. Were you going to say something? We can move on. Okay. All right. So somewhere in here might be a video. I'm not sure. Okay. Let's just, let's just jump to the next step, okay? If they need a video and somebody watches that video, what's the next step? I would say they will contact us either through a form on a website or they'll call us. Okay. What do you think? Should they call you or should they go to a website? Well, it depends where they're going to see the video. No, you're going to design this. Am I still the client here? I'm confused. No, we're still in the... Okay, got it. Oh, I could have swore y'all were in role play. <laughs> it's, it's fine. If we stay in role play, it doesn't really matter. I don't know why we're getting hung up on this. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll, we'll do color correction. Every time we're in role play, the screen will turn blue or something. There you go. Drigo's getting a little hot in the call. I can tell. <laughs> it's in the, in the role play seat. I wasn't sure how I was supposed to be answering. So yeah. I want to what do you think? That. If it were us, what would we prefer? Call me. Call me. And why would we want them to call you? Because I want to be able to talk to you. I want to ask you questions. Okay, check this out. I have so much money, I could buy a $5 million home. What do you think my... my net worth is to be able to buy a $5 million home? 25 million? Probably 10, 10 million plus, right? It's yeah. going to be a lot. Does a $10 million plus wants to scroll through your freaking stupid website or they want to call a human being? What do you think? They're used to what? Service and being waited on, right? Yeah. So you know that. So you design the funnel to be different. You don't design it for your average Joe. You would probably want the call to action on the video to call a real human being. Because it's going to be like white glove service. Okay? Mo, go ahead. You're just, you're just messing me up in my, in my psyche right now. Because Why? a lot of what you're doing, I mean, messing me up in a good way. I didn't mean that in a bad way. Like, you're basing every, every piece of the conversation on the information you're, you're getting beforehand. Where's the information I had beforehand? Well, I want, like, if I was the client right now, yeah. I'd want to buy from you just because of all the clarification you've made throughout talking to me about my own sales funnel. 1,000%. Like, I'm already bought in. You can tell me whatever whatever the number is for the video. I'm going to. So <laughs> it's <laughs> it's just interesting because I'm thinking if I, was in his, if I was in his place, I would have probably been tougher on you because you're asking me to do a lot of the answering of the questions. I would have probably just said, well, what do you suggest? What do you think? You're the expert here. Yeah, but I can I can already tell you how to do that part too. So there's your 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 statement slash comment is two different parts. So right. let's try and understand. The first thing that you're saying is just I can tell the way you think. You're providing me a level of clarity that I yes. already trust you way more than the other Mo guy. Yeah, because he was just talking about banger videos, right. and that's what I'm saying. When you guys are talking to your clients about making videos, what kind of questions do you ask them? Um, how long is it? Should we shoot 2K or 4K? What's the color grade look like? What style are you looking for? What if we use a drone and a handheld gimbal thing? Mm -hmm. You're talking about the things you make still. Mm -hmm. And so when you compete in that space, we'll go back to that slide, right? Let's go back to that slide here. You're going back to this place. You live in the land of no, no man's land here. Yeah. But I'm going to just jump past all of this and just talk about the strategic components. And that's what we mean when we're talking about doing discovery mm -hmm. and selling strategic thinking. That's what I'm trying to do. So far, so good? Oh, yeah. Okay. The second part is you're saying, hey, Chris, you're making me think too much. I like that friction, by the way. I want you to think. Oh, <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> no, I mean, in real life, I like that friction. Mm. I want you to think because you came in thinking, I want two bars of chocolate and a strawberry. I'm like, well, wait, wait, wait. Or do, or, you know, do we really want to eat the chocolate? And you're like, yes. And I said, well, let's, let's see what our, the alternatives are and let's explore that together. Now, here... If you had said back to me, hey, aren't you the expert? Shouldn't you be telling me? I'm going to say, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. If you build $5 million homes, there's a good chance you're similar to your customer. 
What do you expect? You want a white glove service? You want to send me like a monkey to a website? What do you think? Mm. And then what would you say? Well, I mean, you you made it a very biased way the way you asked it. I'd say, well, I don't want to go to a monkey. Well, to of website. course not. Yeah. Like you want the best, um, you, you want the, 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 the hotel room with a view or you want the one that's facing the elevator? Yeah. When you pull up to valet, you want them to greet you by your first name or to, to make you wait in line. Now, I can relate it right back to that. Yeah. I see what you're doing. So when you're mapping out a user journey, you need to map it out for a very specific persona and to understand that you need to have some life experience. And that's why if you're an 18-year-old person, no offense to all the 18-year-olds that are probably watching this video at some point, <laughs> you probably don't know anything. You probably haven't experienced anything unless you were brought up in a certain way that you were exposed to all these concepts as an 18-year-old person. Mm. That's not to say that a 55-year-old person has these experiences either. It's just talk about the richness of the life experience that you have relative to the industry that you're in. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So now they're going to probably want to have the call to action to call human being. Mm -hmm. And then human being is going to do what? Call. Drigo? What do you mean? Once you talk to that person, like, what's the next step? Uh, the next step would be to, I guess, figure out what their budget is. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to qualify. It's called qualify. We're going to qualify the prospective buyer. We're going to qualify the prospect. Okay. And I'll, I'll tell you what I mean when I say that, okay? Because I'm sure there's people who are watching this like, what does he mean qualify? Well, we need to make sure it's a good fit for both of us, mm -hmm. okay? Is it good for A and B? And the way I see it is something like this. So there's a puzzle piece. Okay, and there's another puzzle piece here. And let's just say those two fit exactly together, right? So this part goes in that part and it fits perfectly. Mm. And how do I know? Okay, well, I'll tell you how I know. Well, one thing is budget. What's another thing? It's almost always the same. It doesn't even matter what project you sell. Budget, timeline, mm -hmm. scope. Oh, you want a $10 million home for $5 million? Not going to work. So only after we have an agreement as to what these things are, should we go to the next step, which is probably doing some, doing some kind of planning and, and some initial like onboarding process, showing them model homes, uh, doing a face-to-face -face at this point. Mm -hmm. So we'll just write this as face-to-face. -face. And so we're gonna bring them to the next stage of the engagement, okay? And then eventually we get a sale, okay? We, we get a purchase and then I'm gonna draw some money here, some money. Okay, that's when the sale happens. So this is where we have the conversion. Okay, everybody cool? You guys understand? Yep. Where's the video in this process? Well, it's only around here. Mm -hmm. I can't handle, I can't control what your people say on the phone. I don't know if they're qualified. I don't know what happens to the face to face. I don't know all this other stuff, financing, et cetera. So to say that the video can do that for you, I don't know. Mm. I can be responsible for helping you to find, to find qualified prospects who will pick up the phone. I know how to do that. Now we have to then tie this back to where is this in this cycle here, right? Now, we didn't put something, somebody down here that the referral could be an agent. Good right. chance there's an agent involved in here somewhere, right? Yeah. Right? So far, so good. Mm -hmm. So it might be that the game plan is actually not to send this video to the end user. It could be just to onboard agents that we are the premier um, uh, residential uh, custom home builder of modern homes in the Miami area in these three zip codes. It can be mm. that specific. So when you come across, somebody calls you and it's like, I'm looking for a home, they could then say, well, if you have enough time and you want something custom, I highly recommend premierhomesinmiami.com. Watch this video. Mm. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know yet. But all I know is this. People who are worth a lot of money, the, the value of their time is really, really high. So we have to kind of really think about preserving their time.
could be that a video doesn't even make sense. And then when your client tells you we need a four minute video, our goal should be to try to get this video to be as short as possible. Realizing there's a good chance they won't even make it halfway through. Okay? So you could formulate a plan with your client, right? Let, let's just say this works. I'm not saying it's a good idea that we do something with an agent, the best agents, we take them out, we invite them to the best steak and lobster dinner, and we say we'd love to have your clients be referred to if they're in the market for a custom home and here's the brochure. And then when we go to shoot this video for our client, for you now, let's go back into the role play. So here's what I'm thinking. We shoot a bunch of footage, but we have to have medium and super short videos, and they need to be repurposed for a bunch of these people. So you and I, we should sit down and map out who these people are and then see if we can just do one master shoot and be able to get a lot of repurposable content to hit these people specifically. Does that sound like an idea that you are interested in pursuing? That sounds like a great idea. I didn't even think about this before. Yeah. Now let's talk about money. Okay. What are okay. you thinking? Well, um, how much are you going to clear when you sell a $5 million home profit-wise? Uh, 50%? Probably, right? Yeah. 50%. So that's $2.5 million that you're going to clear on that. And in this next year, how many homes do you expect to build? Um, at least 10. Probably. At, min at least. Yeah. This is the part that the internet gets really... Uh, I know. Mad. The internet gets really <laughs> mad at me because like, here it goes. Here it goes in for the kill. And I'm going in for the kill. All right? But, but it's not going to feel like a kill to you, right? Let no. me change the colors because the kill has got to be red. So we're talking about $2.5 million profit now so that they don't get upset at me. They don't know the <laughs> difference between net profit and gross profit and margins and revenue. $2.5 million in profit. And you're going to do 10 projects, right? 10 projects. What's that going to be? $25 million in profit. Okay? Now... How much money do you want to spend towards this initiative? Well, now that you put it out like this, Chris, it looks like more money than I originally thought. Well, I don't know. You tell me. I got my calculator this time. My man just pulled out a calculator <laughs> from his jacket. I did. I'm that ready was today, awesome. You guys. I am ready. <laughs> Talk about clutch. <laughs> hey, man, Muji called, and they said, this is, we go retro. I could have used my phone, but this is much cooler. Hey. Okay. $25 million in profit, how much money would you like to spend? Would you like to spend 10% of that? <laughs> Peep the emphasis on profit. Profit? 10% sounds right, but still more than what I thought I was going to spend. Okay. So, okay, 10% of this, which is really easy because of the way we did this, 10% of that is, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, $2.5 million. Okay? Two and a half million dollars. That sounds like a lot of money. It does. I respect that. Let's just cut that in half. Let's do 1.25. Is that more palatable for you? I want to say so, but I was thinking like maybe $20,000. $20,000? <laughs> you, you, are you here with me or no? Yes, I am. I am no, totally you're not. You just left the building. You got to speak into the mic, by the way. Yeah. What What do you want to spend? I'd say a million. A million? Yeah. Can, can you do that? Would that give you joy to spend a million dollars with me to try to help you get $25 million? Yeah, that sounds like a great deal. Okay. Here's what I'm going to say to you. A million dollars is a lot of money. I don't want you to take all the risks. Let's work on a plan together. But now I know at least what you're capable of spending. Okay? And does this excite you right now or are you having some reservations? I'm having some reservations. Talk to me. What are they? It's just the number was way more than I initially thought about when okay. I made this phone call. But now that the number's laid out in front of me, it's kind of a no-brainer as a business owner to invest a million dollars and to get out 25. Yeah. You clear 24 on that. Sounds like a good year. Yeah, it, it would be a good year. And you know, I, I, I understand something about construction, Right. If you have a strong foundation, if you use really good materials, if you hire the best architect, it's going to be worth the money. If you wanted to cut corners, you can, but it may not yield the return that you want. 
I'm not saying I'm worth it. You can hire whoever you want, but I hope this gave you some clarity into the way I work that might be different than someone else that you're talking to, all right? You don't have to hire me. Hire whoever you want. Spend whatever kind of money you want. But if you want me, it's going to be somewhere near a million dollars. Is this how much you charge for all of your videos? Nope. I charge different things depending. On, if, if this were $250 million, could you imagine the conversation we'd be having? Very different. Yeah. You just add a zero to that. Is that okay? Yeah. So the one million dollars didn't give me one video. No, I'm gonna come up with a whole plan for you. Okay. No, it's not about a video. I want you to get those results that we're talking about. So this is just a cursory overview of like how we need to work and how strategic we need to be, to think. So we'll set aside a certain amount of money. Let's say a hundred thousand dollars to do strategy with you. And so we're gonna spend a little time doing market research. We probably need to talk to some of the agents in the area, find out more about your business. From there, we'll figure out a game plan. Okay. Yeah. Now let's break the scene here. Okay. We're in a cut. So what am I doing right now? I've just elevated the entire conversation or at least moved it away from the things that I make. Notice he's not going to ask me, are you going to, am I going to get two drone shots? How long are the videos? Right. I mean, he did have a little baby question. Like, is it just for one video? I could have answered that. I said, however many videos it takes for this to work. And then I'm going to just push that aside. Yeah. Cause now I'm involved as a strategic collaborator with my client to get them a result. So I'm selling the result and impact, not what it is that I make. There's, there's the difference there. Mo, you have a question? I don't know. I'm just processing this because this is, this takes me in a trajectory of like that quote that you always say, I don't, uh, you sell what you do. I sell what the world can do. Yes. And I don't necessarily know if this is the, uh, the direction I would want to take a conversation. Okay. Which is problematic because I love what you just did, but this this also feels like is it within the capabilities of the person who's managing the conversation? Like, yeah, watch this. Let's just say, Mo, I, I get what you're saying. You, this, Chris, I'm not as knowledgeable as you. I'm not as confident as you, and I just got a client to agree to pay me a million dollars. All you have to do is call up your friend Chris and say, Chris, I will pay you $900,000. Help me do this project. I'll clear a hundred grand myself and you do all the work and I'll be sipping my ties at the beach. You cool with that? I'm like, I'm cool with that. I'll do the project for you. In fact, I'll give you back 50,000. You keep 150. I'll take, I'll take 850. I'll make this thing. You know, I'll, I'll make all of it. Don't worry. I'll run the discovery for you. I'll hire the video team. We'll fly them in a jet. We'll do whatever we need to do to make this work. That's, that's why you're so cool as a cucumber in these calls because you're almost like, I won't do the work. I'm going to just hire somebody to do the work. Yeah. Regardless of the number, I'm going to find, I'm going to put together the team that does the work. That's why you're just like, oh, 1.25 mil. Cool. No doubt. What's the problem? The problem is there's me included. There's people out here that, I guess that goes against the whole conversation. Like they have a specific system and process and a thing that they're very good at. And doing this is ultimately leading to like, no, we're not the right fit. Does that I mean, make you know, sense? No, you just you just lost me. I don't know. We're just, just like I, I'm somebody who creates micro videos for entrepreneurs online. If somebody came to me and was like, I need a video for my business. If I went down this dialogue, ultimately I'd probably like, no, we're not the right fit. Unless I take your route like, hey, Chris, I just booked a $1.25 million project. Do you want to do it? So it's like you're just open to the possibilities that someone is asking you something that you don't necessarily do, per se. I don't do any of this. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to hire Drigo to do this work. <laughs> so there's a couple of things I want to clarify for our audience here, okay? What I know is I can solve a big problem. I, I can design a, a, a funnel, a, a user journey map that, that can work. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to just call my producer and said, I need the best fill in the blank for each and every single one of these categories. And I, I know that the budget is so beefy that it doesn't matter who they are. And I'm doing this for the benefit of my client, not because I'm lazy. I'm not the best at everything. I'm, I'm good at one thing probably. And then I'm okay at a lot of things. And so I'd rather just hire all these people. So we'll call people who shoot real estate videos. We'll, we'll hire the best actors and the the, the very best of everything that we can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Models, uh, composers, editors, people who do color grading. Uh, like I want a drone specialist that just shoots Miami real estate and architecture. 
I want to hire a writer who can write the most beautiful script so that when you hear it and see it, you're like, oh my God, you got that person? And that's just the difference between you and me. Yeah. You're sitting there thinking, I need to do this work. I can't do this work. I don't know how to do this work. I think my, my mentality is I need to figure out what the problem is and the budget. And with a healthy enough budget, I can hire whoever it is in the world that I want. Mm-hmm. And generally speaking, when we, when we make commercials and music videos, that's what we did. We hired the very best people that money could buy. Okay? So let's, let's quickly recap here, right? You guys are too focused on selling what it is that you make. And in this case, very quite literally, what you make. I make banger short social media posts, right? right What's right. up, Ricky? Yeah, we have a, we have a question when you're ready. For okay. The Zoom call. Okay. Okay, we'll take the Zoom call in a second, all right? So that's why I say, you know, stop selling what you make. What you make is a byproduct of your thinking and of your life experience. So for me, my life experience is a little different than yours. I'm not twice as old as you, but I'm a bit older than you. So I have different experience to talk about. Mm-hmm. What you want to do is find the impact that you're going to create for your clients or the results that they're going to get. That's what I'm focused on because here we get lost in this space here where the clients can't see the difference. Therefore, they just go with the lowest price right. option. We can tell the difference here. We can tell the difference here. Here we get lost. Okay, let's go to the pro group. Who's going to ask the question? Hey, Chris, it's Connor. Connor, that's not pro group. I know. Okay, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so uh, if Connor, if go ahead and ask your question. Can you not hear me? Can you hang tight, me? hang tight. Give us two seconds. I thought you guys were queued up for me. Yo, Go can ahead. You, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, yeah. So if you've got these like super high net worth individuals on the phone and they expect to buy a video for 20K and you're like, no, 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 I, I don't want to sell you a video for 20K. I want to take you through this diagnosis process. But like you were saying, their time is so valuable and, and they how do you keep them on the phone to go through this process? I mean, if I'm, if my time is so valuable and I have an idea of what I want to buy and how much I want to buy it for the moment, I feel like you're redirecting me. I'm getting off the phone, right? Uh, no, you're not because you have a foolish plan. Like it's you driving up in your super fancy car or yacht and saying like, Hey, just put this thing in the, in the engine. And I tell you, we could do that, but it'll ruin your engine. You may want to stop. Okay, he came in there like this is the first time. I did it very, I, I think very naturally with Drico. And I said, hey, let's try to understand what the heck you want here. And, and a few questions in. The reason why I suspect many of you are getting that kind of pushback, pushback that you're talking about, Connor, is perhaps your tone, your delivery, your mannerism, and the way that you're phrasing the question is annoying the hell out of the client. All you have to do, Connor, is join me in a clubhouse room when we do these role play pitches and you'll see how badly people will screw this part up. And there's an art to this. There's a little bit of science. And I'm going to try and teach you the science of the art and how to sell. It's very different. And you'll see it. I even see people who are supposed sales experts, professionals in these clubhouse rooms. And they just suck. They really do. (laughs) And I'm like, are you even listening to them? Are you trying to find a bigger problem here? Or are you just trying to like close this person? (laughs) I know, Ashwin, you guys have seen these rooms. You've been in these rooms with me. Suppose it's so-called sales professional. They go out there and they pitch and you just want to just kick them out the door. They're terrible. So it's just the art of conversation. I try my best to make it natural, okay? That's it. Let's get back into it. Was that the question? Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for asking that question, Connor. All right, let's get back. All right, so... Let's get back to this diagram. There's a fancy diagram, and I will use this diagram before this video is over because you know what? Because I prepared the diagram, and that's what we're going to do. That's right. Let's that's get right. into it. So when somebody says, I need a video, you should say to yourself, wait, why, why do you need a video? What problem does this solve? Okay? And we talked about something here. And before the last live stream that was broken, I pointed to this conversion funnel or this user journey thing. And you, you can write this down, A-I-D-C-A. Everybody write that down. A-I-D-C-A, okay? And it stands for awareness, interest, desire, conversion, and advocacy. How do they become aware? This is really important. Literally, that's what I was doing with Drigo as a client, right? I was saying, how are you going to find out what happens in their life? What's a compelling event? What has changed? What's prompting them to seek a solution to a problem? Mm -hmm. And then why do they become interested? Okay, I'm looking for something. What creates the desire for them to take action? So they become interested because they see a 30-second TikTok video from you or something, or they see a 30-second video somehow in their their life, they become aware. Mm. And seeing that creates a desire for them to pick up the phone 
there's a clear call to action, call us, you know, and, and a real human being will talk to you and assess your needs, okay? And then through a couple of more steps, they're going to eventually buy. Maybe they look at the showroom, which has a bunch of beautiful model homes. Maybe there's an augmented reality thing you do. I don't know. Once they buy, you then deliver, and they become advocates, and they tell 10 other people what an amazing experience it is to work with premierhomes.com of Miami. Mm. That's what they're doing, okay? Now, generally speaking, videos can solve this problem. It can solve this problem right here is awareness. And that's why he said initially, it's probably Google, it's probably Instagram or something like that. Okay, now we know that videos are probably weighted heavily in terms of Google search. In fact, the description, if you write a good description and you search, the search results, if, you're, if you have it open to video, it will show the video now under Google search. So if you wanna dominate search, and everybody knows this, you need to be what? You need to be top 10 search result or what they say is called like above the fold. It's an old magazine term, above the fold or newspaper term, okay? Everybody understand that? You need to rank top 10 on Google. Video is going to give you an unfair competitive advantage to this. All you have to do is Google that and you'll find out. So video can solve that problem. Again, I'm selling you the impact. It could be a piece of crap video, but it gets you top 10, it's gonna change your, your client's business. Does that make sense so far? Yep. Okay. What else can it do? Well, videos can be, um, it can be multi-sensory, which is why videos are so powerful. Do you know what I mean when I say multi-sensory? Visual, audio. Yeah. What it looks like, auditory, what it sounds like. And this is really powerful because this seems like, oh, visual and auditory, really basic. No. If you break down visual, what can constitute visual? What do you think, Trigo? If you're making a video, what 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 things constitute visual? Um, Categories. You mean like emotional and stuff like that? No, or? no, literally like live action. Okay, live action, animation. Right. Live action. You can use animation. What else? You can use photography. Anybody else? Um, you can use type. Type, VR stuff. Well, in the context of video. Because we're selling video, not yeah. some other thing. Right? You can sell, you can include illustration. Illustration. And you can include graphics. You see, so you have many tools in your arsenal to create an effect. Mm. And you could layer these together, live action with animation and typography and some graphic elements could make this a very rich visual experience. So again, don't sell what you do, sell what the world does. I can hire all these people and bring them together and coordinate this thing. Okay, so if we say then auditory, what kinds of things can count as auditory? Go ahead. Uh, music, podcast? No, no, no. Or like voiceover? Yes. Music, voiceover. SFX. Sound, sound design. Effects. Okay. Music, voiceover, sound design. And using those in conjunction with the visuals create a powerful, potentially emotional experience. You ever see these videos where they share on LinkedIn and, and on Facebook? and you see it and you start to well up in your eyes, mm -hmm. you're, you're looking at light projected through pixels to your eyeballs and you're gonna cry over that. That's why I don't cry. I know it's light pixels. But I, you, know, you get a little <laughs> choked up. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You, you're getting a flat two-dimensional image, a representation of something that may or may not have happened and you're gonna get emotional because these things work in concert with each other to create an effect here. You can move people. You really can. Mo, am I boring you? I need no. this on my website. You need what on I your need website? I need this on my website. Oh, the visual. So the effects yeah. here. Okay. Okay. Uh, what else can having a video do for you, for your client? What kind of impact can it make? It could be time-saving. Time-saving in what way? You're right, by the way. 
depending where you're using video in your business, it could be things of like onboarding clients, explaining different things to them. Yeah. You can automate and scale repetitive tasks. Video has the ability to scale infinitely. So I'll put the infinity symbol here, right? So every time you have to like onboard a client, stop, stop having that conversation. It's like, here's an onboarding video. You can even have a part that's custom where you just say, hello, Bob, and then the video plays. Hello, Mary, the video plays. And they can feel, whoa, this is really customized for me. Okay, what else can a video do besides save time? This is where you come in well. It can establish your authority because if we see a really slick video of a person speaking in front of a couple hundred people, all of a sudden we assume mm -hmm. because the video tells us they're a person that's important and worth listening to. I think a video can create interest as well going down AIDCA, particularly with the real estate uh, example that we just had. Like when you see something and you'll be able to see like, a, a house or the interior or even a car your your interest peaks versus just looking at text or something being explained absolutely and when when you do this you could do a, you could do an onboarding video we said onboarding right so that would be the application mm -hmm. i'll put it over here right so onboarding it could be a product demo mm-hmm how to yes so we'll call that training mm -hmm. and training videos now actually help to sell product by the way if you teach people you'll sell product what else what are the what other applications can we find testimonials uh, video testimonials that can be used as testimonials that's true good one What else? Don't you guys work in this space? Yeah, I mean, there's HR videos. There's there's so many different ways that we can go with this. Yeah, try to do the sexier ones. The sexier ones? Brand videos? Brand story videos? Yeah, you can do brand stories. Instagram bangers from Mo. <laughs> Instagram bangers. Social media? Bios. I know that's not sexy, but yeah, okay. commercials. Why don't you just go right to the gutter of boring and <laughs> banal? Is TV commercials? I mean, commercials still in there? like yeah, ads? commercials. Is that what you? But yeah. People don't really watch commercials anymore. But I'll just put it up there. Commercials. Super Bowl ad. Which is a commercial. That's correct, Mo. God, I'm good. Maybe you can help them produce a webinar. You can do something that's I think so. I try to find things that make my clients money. If you guys keep looking for these things, that doesn't make anybody money. That's an expense, and there's a difference there, okay? I think about things like fundraising. Oh, like a Kickstarter video? There's a thousand ways to do fundraising. At a charity, mm -hmm. to, to get investment money, Kickstarter is just one of the applications. So you want to create a list of things that your video can do. A video can actually be a product itself that is sold, True. like an e-learning course, right? Did you guys think about that? No, because you're too busy thinking about HR videos and Oh, <laughs> 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 All you gotta do, you gotta just say one boring one. I mean, to me, with the first four we wrote, feel like they, they cover the gamut. Virtual tour? Well, the thing is, when we're talking to a client, we're like, wait, why do you need this? Who, who is this for? Mm -hmm. How will this help your business? And how will it be used by asking some of these? Dang, Danny, thank you very much. Danny, keep it going, guys. Much love. Much love to you too, Danny. Okay. You see this? A virtual tour. There's a lot of other things that you can do. Mm -hmm. You can help a important CEO deliver an amazing keynote talk True. in front of a, uh, what is it, board of directors. So, 
keynotes that have animation in it always blow me away. I'm like, dang, I need my team to get on this and help me. I'm going in there with a knife. They're going there with a gun to the fight. <laughs> yeah. So you could say, in, in some cases, having video gives you an, an unfair advantage. Right? Yet legal, and this might be copy on your website, by the way, unfair yet legal competitive advantage. My quads are getting to work out today. It's like I'm snowboarding without the snow. <laughs> okay? Unfair yet legal competitive advantage. That's what video can do for you and your business. Would you like that, Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Mr. and Mrs. Garcia? Mr. and Mrs. Chan? Would you like that? Sign me up. Right. That's, that's it right there. Any other questions? So I think the, the beginning, the thing I struggled with, we're tapping, it, tapping in into the millionaire mindset. For someone that's not like a millionaire, is there any exercises or anything that we can start doing to figuring out more of those details from those clients that yeah. we want to get into? Yeah, just hang out with millionaires. No, I'm just messing around with you. I think you have to put yourself in the mind of these people and kind of live in their world, even by just using your imagination or just looking at it from afar to kind of tap into that. But I, I think we have to shift our thinking away from the things that we make to the kind of impact that we make. You know, when somebody asks me if I'm being really smug, they're like, what do you do? What do you make? I said, I make a difference. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to make some impact. You're trying to create positive change in the world. And video can be very persuasive. Photography can be very persuasive. Illustration can be very persuasive. You just need to know what it's for. Mo, you look really perplexed right now in your deep thinking glasses. I know. Um, I do have a question. I'm not trying to create a problem, but if I'm trying to position myself and niche and do all of these things as well, I feel like what we just did, I can be anything for anybody at that point. Yeah. And I try to be anything for anyone at that point. When you, when you begin your life and your career, okay, when you're, when you're at the beginning, it's about what you make, right? And it is about this, and you have to have good craftsmanship, and it takes some time to develop this. Mm -hmm. And Malcolm Gladwell talks about putting in your 10,000 hours, right, to achieve mastery. Okay? So as you get a little older, gain a little bit more experience, you start to move up here, and now you start to move into the realm of strategic thinking. So you were once a maker, and now you're a strategic thinker. And generally speaking, I'm going to get some internet hate as soon as I do this. Usually the money is up here. Usually. <laughs> yeah, because you're the, after the conversation you just had with the realtor, you're hiring us. And do you know why they make more money than the people down here? Because they solve a problem. A yes, real problem. but they solve a problem too. Much bigger problem? Hey, I'm just going to make up a term. It's like a proximity factor. Okay? Yeah. This is you. Okay? And I'll use the whole board this time. This is, what is this? Your client. Okay? Whoever is closest to the client makes the most amount of money. Remember the handoff tax from last time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because there are people in between. Well, I, I won't call them people. Let's call it a studio and I'll just draw a house. Okay. Look how this works. This is an agency. Okay, this is a production company. Uh, this is a studio. 
This is the artist. The artist sells their services to a studio. The studio makes 2x, if not more. The studio sells it to a production company. The studio sells it, and then the production company makes 2x on it or more. Production company sells it to an agency who then they charge 2x, and then they sell it for more. Okay? So if you just take, say, for example, the artist charged uh, $2. By the time it gets to the studio, okay, it's going to be $4. It gets here, it's going to be $8. It's going to be $16, what it costs them to buy. And then they're going to sell it to the client for $1,000. It's usually how it works. Whoever's closest to the client makes the money. So you have to acquire those kinds of skills if you want to talk to the client. So what you are doing right now, you're like a wolf or a sheep in sheep's clothing. I'm a wolf in a wolf clothing. So you as the artist or the sheep, you're going, bah, you're talking to the client. They're like, you're not a wolf. Get out of here. I'm going to give you the lowest dollar amount. And that's why when you can elevate the conversation to the things that the clients are going to feel that are going to impact their business, then you're a wolf. But now you're a sheep in a wolf's clothing, and you could just hire other sheep or other wolves. That's how it works. Probably the worst analogy I've made thus far. So let's answer some questions from YouTube. Let's queue it up here. Okay, so Carson Sweet, Carson uh, asks, do you need a reel and what, what should be in it if so? You do need a reel because at some point they're going to say, let me see your body of work. Or perhaps they need to see your body of work before they even have the call with you. But once they call you, the, the, the game is on. The game is afoot, as they say. Okay? Alfonso, uh, thank you very much for your uh, super chat. Um, hello. And Nick Hoggs saying hi to Mo. Hey. Uh, of course, we said hi to Danny, who said, keep it going, guys. Much love. So here's Alphonse saying, what is a well-rounded sample packet for the potential client? How do we get to sample packet? Who talk, who's, who's talking about samples? Is that Mrs. Fields? We don't give samples. What are we doing here? Okay, Alphonse. I mean, if, they, if they're asking for a sample of the work, you probably have not properly done the value conversation and understanding what they need. Okay. Alex Miner. Coming in with a major question, how do you find or train someone to help you with operations and project management? That's super granular. Maybe another day we can talk about that. Uh, but if you, uh, Alex, can figure out how to have this uh, conversation with a client where you position yourself as a strategic thinker, you will have so much money. You can hire five people and they can all screw it up and you'll still have money. What I want you to do, a lot of you will feel stressed out. Usually when you have a stress, it's because a couple things are going on. One, not enough time to do the work. Two, not paid enough money, so you're kind of hating the project as you go. And three, not having enough resources to help you. I feel like when I'm in a pinch, I have a bunch of my team members helping me out. Chris will help you produce the video. Chris will, will, will edit it. We'll write this script for you. We'll do the work. And so I don't feel so alone. I have help. So if you can learn how to have this value conversation with the client, you can have the money to afford someone to help you. That's it. Okay, what's that blue question there? We just scrolled past it. Bring it back up, guys. Okay, uh, this is from Mega Seth. Mega Seth says, can we make seven figures with content writing? You could do whatever you want, yes? The answer is yes. Uh, there are some um, there are some writers for Hollywood. I think they make $100,000 a day. That's their day rate. Yeah. So, yes, you can. But you have to be pretty exceptional, I think. Or a voiceover. And if you solve a big enough problem, you can make whatever kind of money. Okay, so let's, let's go back to this here. I want to show you something here, okay? Uh, this is going to be a scale. And I'm going to put something here. Okay, and it's going to be a really big problem. Okay, the bigger the problem the bigger the budget, usually like that. The problem here is what you're doing is this. You haven't found a big problem, so you find a small problem. Small little bitty problem. <laughs> I didn't spell small, small right. So little tiny. And then you're like, hey man, pay me the big dollars. And then you're wondering why, because it's not in balance. Small problem, small dollars. So they say, more money, more problems. So you want to get paid more money, you have to find a big problem. That's how that works. 
Question, okay. Chris. Hold on. I want to respond to this. Uh, Bump Goose says I'm his spirit animal. I don't know what that means. I'll, I guess I'll accept it as long as we don't do anything weird with animals. Driegel, what's your question? <laughs> it's actually... <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's from Arzo on YouTube. If a service is expensive and competitive, why would they do business with you when they could do business with anyone? Oh, you think people buy based on money? I don't know. I'm just answering, asking a question. No, is that their question? Yeah, that's their question. Okay. Well, ask yourself, why do you pay extra for those Air Force Ones when you could go and get any comparable pair of shoes? Because Ricky likes them? Yeah, that's why. Because you think you're a logical buyer. You're an emotional buyer. I don't know if you know that. We make decisions via emotion. And then we rationalize our decision using logic. Each and every single one of us. Why did I buy the car? Why am I living in the house that I live in? Why, why do I have this stupid hat? I mean, why do I have anything that I have on? Because emotionally, I'm like, it, it says something about me. So I think Blair N said this, Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember it so I don't butcher it. I'm going to butcher it. Okay? That's a price tag. He says price tells a story. What you pay for something tells a story. And the story is what does it mean to me? Okay, if it's your um, your partner's anniversary and you go out and you spend $10, your partner's going to feel like, whoa, I'm worth 10 bucks. You go and spend ten thousand. Like, wow, honey, I'm worth ten thousand. It says something. So I'm not selling the thing that I make. I'm selling security. I'm selling comfort. I'm selling a solid game plan. I'm selling experience. I'm selling my reputation. I'm selling my ability to connect with another human so they feel safe. Mm. So when there's a big project on the line, there's a good chance that you won't get it because you're not sending them the signals that you're a safe bet. You mm -hmm. seem really risky. You're not asking the right questions. You're rushing to get to the to the answer without understanding the problem. You're still selling what it is that you do. Imagine this, and we talked about this before. You and I go in for a bid. You come in at 25K. It's Drigo and Drigo's crew. I come in, I'm like, you know what? It's gonna be $250,000. Like we just talked to Drigo and it's gonna be, what did I say, what was your price? Yeah, so we'll, we'll say Drigo comes in at a price of 25K, right? And I come in at a price with 250K. And the client's like, what the F? Get out of here. I'm like, yeah, it's a lot, isn't it? It is a lot. And they're like, yeah, because some other guy came in and he said, one-tenth of your price. I mean, yeah, it's cool. But do you know who I'm going to be able to hire with this and who you might need? I'm going to have the screenwriter who worked on Inception. That's not true. I can't do that, but I'm going to have that person. Would you like the, the DP who won uh, three Academy Awards and a, and a Golden Globe? No, we don't want them because they're giving, they're giving the Golden Globes back. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to have access to a deep pool of talent, and it's, I'm going to go into it and selling them something else. You're still talking about selling them pixels on a screen, and there's a difference. And if you don't believe me, all you have to do is look at these big branding firms, and they make a mark, a mark that you and I could make. But the amount of money they can charge is vastly different than the amount of money you can charge. Right. When you have an answer to that, then you have an answer to this problem. Okay. Okay. Nick Sav, thank you very much. And Nick is saying, you are amazing. You have changed my whole business. Thank you. And I thank you. Okay. I think it's almost time for us to wrap here. I don't mean freestyle rap like last time, Mo. But really for us to end this conversation, okay? Yeah. Any other things that we have to address, Mark? There's... One last question here regarding video. Okay. Leo wants to know, what is a small video creator to do to scale up and charge more? What would be one tip other than watch this video? Other than I just gave you the entire plan to how to charge more for a video? <laughs> <Can't deal. laughs> Can't deal. I, isn't it? <laughs> Please replay at a point five speed and then because you know that's what i'm gonna do when i go home watch this all over again. Rewatch this video that's all i can say i spent some of my time mapping out on a notebook like how i'm gonna have this conversation with you and everybody else that's been on clubhouse asking me chris please tell us how to charge for a video how do we build a business around making videos and i'm telling you right now this is what you have to do look at the problem that your video solves stop thinking about the video as a solution it's not it has to solve a problem. So ask yourself, what problem are you solving? 
can we get a hair nuance since we're about to bounce here in a second? Yeah, I thought you were going to say, can I get an amen or something? Can I get can a, get can a, can I get a amen? We can amen. say that too. Can I get an amen? Can you? Amen. Yeah, from the back. Shout out to Angel. Um, so I'm at a stage in my business right now where I have people doing the work finally at that stage. And Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, and the constant thing that keeps coming up in conversation is well, why do you charge so much compared to the other people that can do what you do? And you, you, you did just show that. So I want to know, how do I leave here and create a video that actually solves a problem? Like, do I have to identify the problems that I'm seeing my recurring client is having and then just build some something around that? Or do I just go custom every time I'm on a sales call like you did with Drigo? Because I'd like to have something that's like, we've done this for somebody like you before. These are the results that we got. Is this the problem you're trying to solve? If so, we're the right person. Yeah, you're talking about something totally different. You're talking about Greg Hickman automation thing, right? Productizing your services. Not necessarily, but my- What is it then? My clients usually have the same problem. What's the same problem? I want to build awareness for people to find me and when they find me i want to i want them to convert okay so now and i've you want me to solve this for you right now sure you sure you're dragging the video out now i'm not dragging the video out you are this is a different problem okay you want to you want to productize your services that's what you really want right is that what you're doing I see those two questions. I'll get to them in a second, Mark. Thank you. Sure. Let's no, I don't want to twist your arm like, oh, Mo, you want to productize. You tell me what you want. I want to have a solution that solves the problem regularly, and it's and I know it does. So maybe, I don't know if that, that's necessarily productizing the service. It is. Okay, you just don't want to say Then it. I want to productize the service. Why are you allergic to that word? I'm not. Okay. I'm Mo has to being broke. a very specific solution, and he doesn't want a lot of the headaches productize services and there's a whole video that we did with Greg Hickman I'll write it down here for you guys Greg you can send me a check later for mentioning your name twice now Greg Hickman he helps creative service companies productize and automate their stuff mm -hmm. so you're saying you have a client so we'll draw my stick figure kind of client right and the client has the same problem and it and then when the client has the same problem, you can pretty much automate these things. Mm -hmm. Okay? Product says, I need what? What do they need? I need to increase my awareness. And how are they going to do that? Social and YouTube. How are they going to measure that? Uh, views, likes, comments, and okay. then how we can convert some people. Okay. They're going to need awareness on social, probably what, on Instagram? Yeah. Okay. Instagram. Okay. LinkedIn. So we're talking about views. Um, likes and shares, right? Mm -hmm. Even comments, probably? Yep. Okay. It's always one of those four. Right. And hopefully, follows. Yep. You forgot one. Perhaps their most important metric follows, right? Yeah. Why are you laughing at him? Um, Flea Molly said allergic to being broke. I felt that. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So they have awareness. Woo. Okay. Things are working. Right. Now what? Now what do they want? We need to convert those views, like shares, comments, follows into customers. So usually, and this is where, this is why you were like, we're about to go to a different section. We are. I now have to think way more than just the videos that I'm making. I have to think of this system that's going to get them views and shares and hold on, hold how on. do I get them to comment into DMs and da 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 da. Hold on. Hold you on. have to think. You prefer not to think? No, not that. Well, you just said I have to think about all the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> what I'm saying is like, okay, so right now yeah. I'm charging 5Gs just to post-produce these videos. Yeah. This level of work to me is like I need to 3X where I'm at because you're getting like this plug and play solution that's guaranteed to get you results. Are we talking about the same thing here? Yeah. I didn't, wh where'd you get that from? How is a video going to convert them to customers? It might not. I, I'm just trying to understand the problem. Oh, okay. right, well, I let's... even told you the solution. <laughs> okay. You're telling me you don't like the solution I have yet to provide. No, I didn't say I don't like the solution. I'm just saying 
we can keep going. Okay. Convert to customers. Yes. How are they going to convert to customers? Um, DMs or a specific call to action for a rep that that person has to then reach out to them. Okay. There's going to be some kind of click-through rate, mm -hmm. right? CTR, click-through rate. So out of a thousand of these, how many people go through, mm -hmm. right? So let's just say there's a thousand people who are somewhat interested or seen it. A very small percentage is going to go through. What has your client told you so far? What's their click-through rate on a video? I, I haven't gotten this far. Well, then you're then the end of conversation because you, you're not asking them the thing that matters to them. Okay. Let's just say it's 3%. It's usually not high. So out of a thousand people, three percent of that is what? Thirty. Thirty? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. If it's a hundred, then it's three. If it's a thousand, it's thirty. Mm -hmm. So if they have thirty people who who take action of some sort, are you are you done? Is your job done? Yeah. It's done. At this point, if yeah, they screw it up, done. it's their problem. Yeah. So then you can work backwards. You can say, well, if you need 30 DMs or call to action, whatever, click on a website, then we need, you, need, you probably need a trackable link that they Correct. can assign to this. Are you doing that? Yeah. For you Instagram, are. we are. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Do you know what they're getting? The, one, the, 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 client that, the client where we were managing everything from not just editing, but strategy all the way to like managing the content, they were able to 3X their email signups from then, where they were. Then it worked. Yeah, it did. Okay, so you're selling actually uh, probably not click-through rates, but you're probably selling them new leads. Yeah, that's Ultimately. the conclusion I'm kind of coming to now. Right. Is it's lead gen, and the videos are a source for that. Right, so you say to them, this is how you, you work backwards. You say, okay, what kind of click-through rate have you been getting? And how many leads are you getting from that? Mm -hmm. And you work backwards. So if we watch this, let's say they want to get uh, 60, okay? They want to get 60. They're, they're here. They want 60 from you. There's two ways to get to 60. How can you do that, Mo? There's only two ways. You're saying like what kind of content? No. How do they get to 60? If they're at 30 right now at 3%. More people to watch. How many more? So we'd have to double the 1,000 to 2,000. Correct. So we're going to get to 2,000. So That's one views. way. What's the other way? Uh, increase the click-through rate. Correct. To yeah. what? To six. Correct. Six percent. So now you're talking like a strategist. How many leads do you need? What are you getting? What's your click-through rate? Okay. How many eyeballs are you getting on the content? Now I have a baseline. So we're going to establish a baseline. This is really important when talking to business owners. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the baseline? Three right percent. Three percent. One thousand and thirty. That's your baseline. Right. Okay, so I'll write it here, baseline. Sometimes people are like, well, I can't measure effectiveness. You can measure something. Find the thing that you can measure and work on improving that. The delta, the difference between where they're at and where they're, where they're going to be is where you make your money. Okay? You've helped them now to 2x their revenue. Now you can ask them one more question, okay? Go back to this color. What is the lifetime customer value? I don't think um, that's the right um, acronym, but what's a lifetime customer value? What is one customer worth to you? What are they going to say? Um, on average, if it's high ticket, like 2500 If it's low ticket, like 150 Let's say that, 2500 bucks. Yeah. Okay? So now we do the math. Yeah. Here we go again. So let's say we have two scenarios. One is 150 and one is 2,500. Yeah. You're going to get them 30 new clients. Mm -hmm. So you're going to multiply that by 30. You can multiply this by 30. Yeah, I'm definitely not charging enough. <laughs> Just seeing the we numbers. Never, are. <laughs> never charging enough. Yeah. Okay. So if you can help them get 30 new clients where they can convert. In one scenario, it's worth $75,000 to them. In the second scenario, it's worth $7,500 from them. Mm -hmm. Any amount of money they spend, less than $7,500 is a win, especially if they sell digital products. Yep. 
and a lot of people sell digital products, okay? Because there's really very little overhead on selling a digital product. It costs almost the same if you sell 200,000 units versus four units, mm -hmm. almost the same, okay? So anything less than that. So if you say take that in half or a third or whatever, you know, let's say you charge them $3,500 to make these videos. They're going to clear what? They're going to clear 4K. Yep. That's not bad for you doing most of the work. Nothing of, nothing of what they do changes. That's their net. They net that. This is the price of the video. So there's another way to look at it. So those of you that think, oh my God, I'm not ready to deal with multimillionaires and billionaires, you just do it like this. Like, what are we trying to do? You have a real business conversation with business owners. Right. That's the bottom line. It's all roads lead back to learn how to talk the language of business, become bilingual. Don't speak the language of video, speak the language of business. Bring those two things together. Any questions, Mo? So on your onboarding document, you're like, hey man, um, Johnny Smith, I don't really care what you do. You're not gonna talk like this. I don't really care what you do. Do you have a business problem to solve? Yes, I do, Mo, I want more leads. Okay, what does that look like? Tell me your CTR, tell me your lead gen, tell me your conversion ratio, we're good to go. That's your baseline. And then you say, I can do that or I cannot do that. Okay? All right, let me say hi to a couple of people here. We're, we're talking to Alkan um, Oz, Ozaturk, Ozturk. Alkan Alsterk, uh, thank you very much for the super chat. How can you approach and talk to leads like an agency if you found them on freelancing marketplaces like Upwork? Thanks, Chris. Alkan, it's very difficult. Don't do it. First of all, you shouldn't be on marketplaces. Marketplaces are designed to exploit creative people and to, to kind of compete on the lowest common denominator. People who go to marketplaces, generally speaking, it's not always the case, generally are just looking for a bunch of creative people to like cherry pick whoever they want and they cannot see the difference. You remember that chart where we can't tell the difference? That's the problem, Alkan. The best thing that you can do starting tomorrow is to start to develop your own. This is where you eat your own dog food, as Blair N says, which is you start to think like a strategic thinker and you help yourself. God, there's too many slides now. You help yourself using your own video on the topics you wanna be known for so mm -hmm. that you can rank as top 10. That's how you change the game. You yep. use your own strategy and you prove it to them. So when the client calls, you're like, I don't know if this can work. I'm like, how'd you find me? Oh, Google, were we on top 10 or no? Oh, yeah. Any other questions? No. When do you want to send the money? <laughs> so I did it's it. just like that. It's facts, though. Why haven't you done that? Why haven't you? I mean, maybe you've already done it. Yeah. Yeah. It's what you have to do. Okay. So you're very welcome, Alkin, for the spicy answer. Jeremy Solomon says, thanks a lot. Great session, Chris. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Really appreciate you. I don't know what kind of currency unit that is, but it, it makes me happy. There's a lot of zeros in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably $4.75. Love it. Love so I love it. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's go to the pro group. Pro fam, how are we doing? You have any questions before I get out of here? I've hey, got Chris. one, but it's I don't gone hear gone anybody. You, you Help me out. Okay. Yeah, Sorry, I'm just gonna give us two seconds. Jonah has to activate your your microphone. Go ahead. Cool, Chris. I was gonna ask just about the follow up. So after you have the conversation, you've identified the budget. Is it then that you send a proposal with the budget that you talk about? Uh, what happens after after you've established what the client has to spend? Okay, this is really good. So stay with me. Uh, what you would do is you would say, so if we, uh, if this and this happens, you're ready to spend this and this. And then they say, yes. I said, is there anything else that would prevent you from saying yes? They're like, no. Uh, does anybody else have to be part of this decision-making process? They say, no. So if I send now this proposal, would you be ready to move forward on Tuesday, 48 hours, whatever it is? And they say, yes. Then you just send a one piece of you know, like one page proposal you don't put in any bios you don't put in capabilities you just say for this amount i do this sign on the dotted line pay me 50 percent up front and you're good to go okay you want to make sure you're triple confirmed that they want to work with you otherwise you're just wasting your time all right okay uh, anybody else from the pro community pro fam i've got a question as well one more okay fire connor. away connor Okay, so, and this is basically what Mo's question was earlier, so just correct me if I'm wrong in understanding this. If I'm an illustrator, I do something super niche, it's, I make illustrations, and someone calls me and says, I want an illustration from you, and I go, well, what problem are you trying to solve with that illustration? And they say, I want to generate more leads, and then we go through this long conversation, this diagnosis, and we get to the bottom of it, 
And it turns out that I think they think that they actually need a video for $20,000 and I don't do videos. So I tell them that I do videos and then take that 20 grand and hire Drigo. Is that the plan? I'm no longer an illustrator. I'm an entrepreneur. Hold on. Because if, I, if I'm doing illustration, like that's what I do. That's what I, I don't want to send someone off by diagnosing a solution that is something I don't do. Hold on. Hold on. Mo wants to give you an answer. I hope he's right. Yes. You take the money and you hire Mo, not Drigo. You hire Mo. That's right. my answer okay. on that one. <laughs> no, okay, Connor, stay with me here. Mo's trying to be a funny guy right now. Okay, here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to sell something and say something that is a pile of BS, okay, Connor? So what you say is like, this is not within my wheelhouse, and there's probably people who are better suited to do this for you than me, and I would not be doing you right by telling you I could do something I cannot. However, I know some super talented people, and if you are interested in having me do this project, then I can put together a team, but it's going to take me a couple of days to get you a legitimate answer. You just tell it to them straight. I understand. Yeah, so, but that would mean that anybody that's calling me as an illustrator for an illustration thing, that I do a diagnosis, and I actually might be sending them away. And that's, that's, the, that's the plan. Let, let, me, let me clarify that, too. If you are truly working in the best interest of your client, when the client presents to you, they have a problem that you cannot solve, taking their money and not delivering or solving that problem is a dishonest way of doing business. 100%. Okay. okay. Perfect. It's like a guy is like, I got a broken foot. You're like, you know what? I got some great medicine for a migraine. It's like, that doesn't really help me. I got a broken foot. Well, this medicine is excellent. You need to buy this medicine. Okay. So if they come to you okay. with that kind of thing, here's the thing that I want you just to kind of reframe the way you think. Well, if a client comes to me and they need a video and I'm an illustrator, you are right back to selling what it is that you make. You're defining yourself by your title, not the impact and change that you make, okay? So one way to reframe this is I make images that get clients a certain kind of result. And in the world of images, it's more than just an illustration. It could be a graphic, it could be a cartoon, it could be a, a piece of type, or it could be a video, it could be interactive, virtual. And that was one shift that we made many years ago when my business coach said, Chris, you don't just make videos. Stop talking about that you just make commercials and music videos. If somebody has a story to tell and they want images to tell that story, you're probably one of the best in the world. I started to understand that. I believed it. I acted upon it. And that's how we got into web design and brand strategy and identity design again. And that's how we changed. We thought of ourselves differently. So I want you to think of yourself differently. Okay? Your, your wheelhouse is illustration. What you're good at, what you're really confident is in illustration, but it's not what you sell. Okay? Now... Even I, if they're coming to me for illustration, even if they're coming to me for illustration, that's my wheelhouse. That's not what I'm trying to sell. No, you're trying to solve a problem. Got it. Okay. Clients came to us all the time. They still do, actually. They'll come to you and say, hey, Chris, we love that video. You, you did that music video we saw and we love. We'd love to have you make a video for us. And I would say, stop. In the name of love, stop. What, what, what is this video going to do for you? I'd love to sell you a video. I'd love to take all of your money and put it in my pocket and do something super cool. I just don't feel like it would be ethical for me to take this money without understanding what this video is going to do for you. And we get a whole conversation. They go out the other door. They came in the door of video. They walk into the door of brand strategy. And then Bob's your uncle. Understood. <laughs> Bob's your uncle. Yeah, you understand? <laughs> yeah. <Yep>. Okay. <laughs> Katie, shut the door. That's how we do it. <laughs> so we're out. <laughs> and we're out. Yes, we're out like the gout. Thanks, Chris. You're very welcome, man. Okay. Ime, you wanted me to repeat something again? I'm about to fall yeah, over, Chris, Ime. You were, you were talking about um, how you used to operate and say that if a client had a story to tell and they wanted to use images, then you're the best. I just, I just like that as copy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we can do uh, our channel is going to be allowed to have the beta program called clips from youtube that li literally means anybody who has a youtube account can select point a and point b clip it and post it to their channel it doesn't hurt us it helps us so you'll be able to do that and you just play that in a loop you just play it in a loop okay that's how we're going to do it so you guys clips is coming to the future because the future is where clips are at all right okay <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question, please. I'm about to fall over. Okay, where is it? I don't, oh, there it is. Okay, last question. This is it. 
because I'm going to disappear like a vampire. Guillermo Prieto says, hi, my son is a musician. Awesome. How can he commercialize his music to video creator? Huh? Video creators. Direct to video studios or reach directly to final client. Okay. Let's go back to this chart here. I think this chart says it all. It's almost like I've premeditated all the answers before people started asking them. <laughs> of course you okay? did. Of course. You, you remember this? You remember this, Guillermo? Your son is a musician. The more people that get in between him and whoever makes the purchasing decision, he's going to get less and less of that pie because people are hungry. They take a bite out of that pie, and by the time it gets to your son, there's a crumb left. So ideally, your son should be selling the music to the person who's making the purchasing decision with the fewest number of people in between, okay? So direct to studio would be ideal or direct to final client would be better than, than to studio because the studio is here, <laughs> the client's over there, okay? The one problem with going direct to client is clients, generally they're unsophisticated buyers. They usually work through an agency or a studio and so they have people who train them how to think and behave like clients. So when we sold direct to client, we made a lot more money, but they were really unfamiliar with the entire creative process. There was a lot of client education that had to be had. So I just want to warn you there, okay? Yeah, and unfortunately in the world right now, if your son is not a superstar pop artist, it's a tough business to be in. It really is. Because people are sending me free clips all the time so you can use it for anything you want. Mm. It's a tough, tough business. So it's really a... It's going to be an uphill peel climb for you. Okay. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye to every single person. How many people were tuning in live today? I never got a stat. Okay. So we had about 550 people-ish uh, joining us live. I, I just want to let you guys all know, uh, I'm glad that you're here. I miss you. We'll be doing more of these kinds of content. If, if, Mark, what should be the challenge? How much time are we going to give people to watch this video before we take this video down? A what? How, what's the number, though? 10,000 is a week sauce. We should get 10,000 by the first day. Like a, like a view, count. view count, yes. 50K. 50K, okay. So today is Friday. If by the following Friday, if this video doesn't get to 50,000 views, this video will disappear. It will disappear and it will be available only for my pro community. I want to thank all the people from the pro community who jumped on this call last minute. That's all right, Connor. Everybody, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thanks, thank you for participating. And to all, always the, the two, to my two brothers from another mother, Mo and Drigo. I give you all a hard time, a.k.a. Drake. But, you know, <laughs> we good. We good, fam. Okay, let's get out of here, Jonah. <laughs> See you guys next time. We're going to play some music. I might do some dancing. But Smash amazing. the like button. Smash the like button. Smash Don't forget button. to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. And 